Hey folks, Kayak DIY here. Got something special for you. So right now I'm on the Windrider 16. This here is a trimaran and it has kind of a main hull that is very similar to sit inside kayaks. Uh, the Windrider 16 here might remind you of my Hobie Island, which I have. Uh, the Hobie Tandem Island that I have is very similar in many respects to the wind rider that you see here except you might notice one big thing i'm sitting inside um, versus on top of the hull so on my wind or on my hobie island i'm sitting on top of the kayak hull and on the wind rider 16 that you see right here i'm sitting inside now right now we're on the gulf ocean area um, near sanibel island and I'm with a group of people. Uh, right there is my buddy Jeff, and right there is my buddy Ricky. These actually all belong to my buddy Ricky. Uh, he is so um, in love with these crafts that he has bought several out of pocket. He's not sponsored by them at all. Um, so we got the Windrider 16 here, and they actually make a Windrider 17, which is a tandem, which I did a video on at 10,000 Islands along with various other crafts including my Hobie uh, Tandem Island. So you might want to know how you go about sailing these. Um, well I'm going to try to explain this to you the best I can for those that don't have sailing knowledge. So I'm going to try to leave out sailing terminology. Basically you have a rope which sailors call a sheet because it's attached to a sail. So this rope here runs through a cleat and then it runs up this pulley here and it runs all the way back and down right there i don't know if you can see that all but that basically controls the swing of boom off to the side so if i want to let out the sail and let it swing off to the side towards these outriggers that you see here all i need to do is let out more of this rope the other thing that you need to keep track of, for the most part, that line right here is the one that you're using 90% of the time if you're gonna be doing anything um, with the sail. It, you're gonna be using this. So it's pretty much one rope or one line that you're using to sail this. Up top here, you'll see like a blue line, like a, a bright blue line. And it's kind of on like an anchor trolley type setup where there's a pulley here and a pulley over there. That's how you pull the sail out and, and unravel it from the mast. So it's pretty simple setup. Um, I really didn't have much idea of how to set this thing up. Uh, my, my buddy Ricky usually has it set up already ahead of time. But today I had it on the trailer behind my truck and as they were setting up hers, I just kind of figured it out. I mean, I, for the most part, was getting the Aka Amas, which are these arms and the outriggers. I was getting those all put all, all put together on my own without any instruction because it's kind of intuitive on how it goes together. Um, so I'm not sponsored. I don't know anything really about wind riders. I'm learning as I go, but these things are pretty dang cool. And they're made by Confluence Outdoors, which I believe is connected with Wilderness Systems. So you might know Wilderness Systems from the kayaking market. And I really wanted to show this to you because it's kind of, kind of feels like I'm sitting in a kayak that just so happens to have a really sweet sail and outrigger setup. And one of the reasons why I like this a little bit better than my Hobie uh, Island is because these arms here are much beefier. They're much more robust. Uh, everything just feels really solid and well built on this craft. Not saying that the Obi Island isn't, I'm just saying this feels even a little bit more durable. And by the way, I'm not sponsored by Hobie either. <clears throat> so you guys might notice there's a trolling motor on here. Well, one of the things in regards to the wilder or in regards to the wind rider that I'm on right now versus the Hobie is the Hobie has pedal drives. So if we 
don't have any wind or if I end up, let's say, turning, which you control the steering with your feet and that turns the rudder that you see in the back there. If you end up turning and all of a sudden you don't have any wind, you might be sitting there kind of stalled until the wind turns you. Well, with the Hobie, you have the pedal drives and you can, you, you kind of can be a lazy sailor and if you don't have momentum, you can just use the pedals to, to turn you around. With this particular uh, craft, you don't have pedals. So if you turn or if you end up not having a, basically a dead sail where there's no wind, uh, then you need to have some other means of turning a craft to be able to catch the wind again. So having a trolling motor or a paddle is kind of nice. What I have found is though, the rudder is so big and robust on this thing that if I'm turning and all of a sudden I lose the wind, right now I'm trying to turn to see if I can show you. So right now I'm losing the wind. The boom is kind of swinging there. If I pump my feet like this, I can kind of turn the craft a little bit and use the, the rudder essentially as pedals. So that's kind of a technique I found here. Now I'm gonna see here if I can do it enough that I can, uh, that I can turn this craft around here, catch the wind. You know that you're catching the wind some when the boom and the sail stops going like this and vibrating and making noise. So right now, just simply using the, the foot pedals, I was able to use the rudder kind of as a pedal drive essentially to kind of work the front end around so that I could catch the wind again. And here I go, I'm, I'm moving along. So I purposely did that to show you um, that if you don't have enough momentum going forward and you start turning, you're kind of going to stall out because you need to have that wind and that momentum to push you through the turn so that the boom can swing to the other side and catch the wind. I hope that kind of makes sense. <clears throat> um, but yeah, here's kind of the setup and I am very impressed with these. Uh, you know, my buddy Ricky, who's kind of over there in that in that one over there he's really been pushing on me to try to to try to get me to get one myself uh, as you guys know I live on a canal which actually the canal is okay so right there under the bridge is open Gulf ocean water my house is up in the canal system up over here so if I had one of these which I you know he wants me to get I could leave out of the backyard and uh, and go out under under those bridges into the the Gulf. I would likely want to have a little outboard motor though. I think uh, with some extra gasoline in order to be able to do that. Just because you never know if you're going to lose wind. Uh, I could also do that trip with my Hobie Tandem Island, but uh, it just depends. Uh, I really think if you're gonna do it, you wanna have a motor of some sort because if you come all the way out of there, that's actually a river. And so you're gonna fight current going back in. So you really, I think, need to have some type of outboard or uh, a, a motorized setup. What I think would be kind of cool is have some flexible solar panels or even on one tramp have a flexible solar panel. So you could take this thing camping and have it charge your battery uh, when you're on the go. I think you could run for a long time. I mean, it'd be a sweet setup. I actually have some flexible solar panels and I've been thinking about doing a similar setup with the trolling motor and having the solar panels on the, the tramps. So if you guys comment, I know a few of you guys are watching, I can maybe answer some of your questions here because I can't actually see the screen. <clears throat> but uh, you can just let me know if you have any, any questions regarding this particular uh, craft. I mean, I realize it's not a kayak, but at the same time, it's very similar to a kayak. And in all honesty, the Hobie Island, they call it a kayak, but Let's be real, it's a small trimaran. I mean, it, 
it it's technically they consider a kayak and treat it as one but you know the the term kayaks gotten really broad so i figured this is a cool enough little craft and it's kind of in a competition i'd say with the hobie island and i just want you guys to see what other options are out there on the market and some of these can actually be a little more affordable at times than the hobie island how does it sail oh my goodness this thing in even light wind i think it does outperform uh the hobie island i, I the hobie tandem island that i have i have a 2017 hobie tandem island I would say in the same conditions for wind, I've been able to sail this, I think, a little bit faster. Um, just maybe a hair. I don't know. It does have a bigger sail, though. I'm quite confident that it does. I don't know the specs of the sail. You guys would have to take a look at the links and so later on. Um, I'll try to get you guys information on them. Uh, someone commented about Sanibel. Let's see. Is the Sanibel Bridge behind me? Yes, actually, uh, I can show it to you right now. Right there is the Sanibel Bridge, that kind of iconic tall bridge. And then there's the various other little bridges um, on the islands that connect to the causeway. <clears throat> Let's see what other people have to say here. Do I think you can make one at home? Um, actually, if you, if budget is a concern, I don't know what it would cost exactly to, uh, make it work, but there is a company called Expandacraft. Now, if you had a sale already, maybe off like a sunfish or a sale off of, you know, some other small sailing craft, you could probably, if you could find a, a main haul, like, you know, that, that seemed like it was, it was gonna work for the setup to mount the sail to what you could do is you could look at expand craft outriggers they make basically these um aka amas um setups aka amas meaning kind of outriggers these floats that you see on the side so check out expand craft because they kind of let you convert other crafts into trimarans um, they even have them set up for uh canoes <clears throat> But this is kind of a purpose-built machine. Uh, it actually has a little bit of a, a keel that helps kind of keep it tracking straight, which is kind of important for sailing. Um, so if you ended up building your own, you would need to have some type of maybe like a swing down dagger board to be able to help keep you tracking straight and, uh, and not drifting sideways when the wind hits you. That, that's something to keep in mind. You just came across the bridge about an hour ago? <laughs> Small world, huh? That's awesome. I'm trying to scroll through some of these comments here, make sure I'm not mi missing things. So here I'm catching up with, uh, with my buddy Jeff. Jeff is a genius when it comes to DIY. That guy has made so many sweet things. When we were camping, he had some really cool solar charging setups. He also had a really cool campfire setup where he could like move the fire. <laughs> it was weird, like, he's a he's pretty smart guy. He's really good with electronics. Hey Jeff, I'm live on the channel. Really? <laughs> I was just telling him you're a DIY genius with all your electronics. You haven't seen what I did to my truck lately. Oh yeah. He has pretty sweet uh pretty sweet vehicle too. Every everything he has he, he pretty much makes and, and tinkers with, so I'll probably, if I end up pursuing that solar panel idea, I'll probably have to talk with him and see what he thinks.
I don't know if I mentioned it yet in this live video, but right here you see this white line that's here. This is so that you can still steer the craft while laying out on the trampolines kind of. Um, it gives you an option to, to be able to still be able to steer because the majority of the steering I'm doing is actually with my feet. And then that turns the rudder system. So it has kind of twin control rudder lines. Yeah, you can see how shallow it is here. We're all running on radios. So that back there is Picnic Island, and up there is my house in the canal system, and right there is the Sanibal Bridge, and on the other side of this is pretty much Gulf Ocean water. If you followed this coastline, you'd get to Key West. There's kind of a perspective um, from of what the wind rider looks like here. I'll try to get a little bit closer here and you can kind of see So, I don't know, but it, Puna Rasa boat ramp. <laughs> so, the boat ramp that you see pretty much right in the center of the screen, right next to the causeway, they charge like $10 a, a day to park your, your trailer and your, and your ramp and stuff. Yeah, it's pretty cool. They actually have a uh, live bait there too, right near the ramp if you had to buy your own bait. But honestly, there's a lot of bait balls around these areas where you can catch your own bait. Uh, I actually have a sabiki rod for catching bait, which works really nice. It's basically a rod that's thick, but then it's hollow in the center and all of the sabiki hooks run into the center of the tube and it keeps all the hooks from kind of snagging on you. because when you're working from a kayak or from a smaller craft, having a sabiki rig on anything but a sabiki uh, pole, it, it can be a mess. Um, I got different size ones. I don't know. It's kind of a tangled mess right now, but these I think are like medium size. I don't know. It's just enough to be able to get around the rod. And then I have a larger one over there um, just in case I want to clamp around something like that. But they work pretty well. They're kind of convenient. So that's kind of a look at it. Works pretty nice. Um, as far as fishing reels, I like using the Pen, uh, the Pen Spin Fisher series because they're pretty well sealed for the money. Uh, so when you're on smaller crafts with the salt water, you know you get splashed, and um, these seem to hold up pretty well. And then I use the Ugly Stick um, fishing poles. I don't spend crazy money on fishing uh, rods. I just can't afford to. I'm, I'm not crazy wealthy. I mean, I don't know if people think I am with the channel or anything, but um, I, I am very budget conscious. Where do I get a sabiki rod? Um, they have them on Amazon, I've seen, but um, I actually got mine at Bass Pro. Um, if you guys are watching and you're not near any a place like that, I will try to link in the video description below one to Amazon. That's actually how I fund the channel is when people buy stuff off Amazon. Um, it gives it like a commission. That's how I actually afford to do a lot of this stuff and, and show things. But yeah, actually Bass Pro has them. Uh, I think the cost of them runs somewhere around 50 some bucks, which is actually comparable to what they were on Amazon as well. But I was kind of in a hurry, so I went to Bass Pro. I think it's like 50 bucks for the Sabiki rod, and then you can get like one of their cheap reels. <laughs> They're coming through on the radio. You can get a uh, Sabiki rod with a reel around 74 bucks at uh, Bass Pro. 
Um, I didn't get the one that's comboed with the reel because I wanted to put my own reel on it because I'm kind of picky with the reels because um, some reels just don't end up lasting in the salt water. So um, they make a. He's always on the phone talking to somebody. He's one of those uh, millennial, you know, kind of thing. My buddy Ricky's uh, making fun of me for being on the phone and, and uh, doing live with you. He's saying I'm, al I'm always on the phone. I guess I shouldn't be texting and driving. <laughs> but the thing is, is, this thing's it's so easy to sail. I mean, it's just super easy. So I'm just kind of relaxed. I got drinks in here. Gatorade, it's it's Florida, you know. Man, it's so nice Gator country. But anyway, um, anyone else have any questions? I'll do my best to answer if you comment below this video. Um, otherwise, I'll probably let you go. Um, and uh, just yeah, just we'll uh, maybe you'll see more of these in later videos. Uh, we're planning a Kaya Costa trip and. Maybe a few other trips as a group. Uh, the sailboat that I have, that 22 footer uh, with the cabin, that project's coming along. You'll probably see some videos on that here pretty soon in the near future. Uh, I just am waiting on a few supplies. Mail has been slow here in Florida. I mean, like behind by like a week for some reason. I don't know why, uh, but that's really delaying some of these videos. Uh, I have a couple other new kayaks that came in. Uh, my primary paddle kayak is my Viking Profish Reload Z. Um, I have a video coming out on that probably this week with a really cool mod. So I know the channel's kind of been stagnant for a little bit. It's going to pick up again. I'm just kind of working with what I got as far as uh, supplies. And, and when when the mail ends up delaying, then I'm kind of delayed a little bit and, and being able to get content out. So thanks for watching. and. Uh, yeah, thanks for the support, guys. You guys are awesome. Uh, you really, really are. Uh, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing without you.